actually this image I, I put it on the block at some point because I, 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 I thought that maybe this woman wants such a big car because she wants to feel smaller I'm always trying to find like signs of the desire to be small already manifesting itself in society so uh, of course that's a comp it's, I mean, I'm, I'm turning around the truth here probably because she wants to be, have this big car because she wants to feel safe, which is maybe even the opposite from what I'm trying to do. But um, just imagine how big that car would be if you were 50 centimeters. I also like the idea of, of, of basically the adventure of, of having to get to know uh, this world again, you know? Uh, the, the fact that we could maybe put 10 stories in a one, one two-story house, that we would have to repurpose that space we have to think about it. Of course, you have it a little bit. Like, for instance, there's uh, little people sometimes, they need to uh, adjust their car, and they have all kinds of kits for this, and you have really nice specialized companies. These companies could be the Microsofts of the future, you know, because they all of a sudden they have an expertise that is very, very much wanted. I just also just like the idea of space. If you have only 140 million people, uh, pop, well, let's say the equivalent, of course, there's still 7 billion of them, so they are everywhere. Um, then you would have a lot of space. You could give a lot of space back to the planet, uh, space that it probably needs to kind of you know, heal itself. And, the, and, and I also like the idea of this, and this is one of the more, and I think you were talking about, this is Mars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're in, the front, you, in the front you cannot see it, but on the TVs actually the slides are pretty good. Um, so this is a, a picture of uh, Mars, you cannot see it. Um, but um, uh, as I was doing this investigation, starting like, like really like a, like a blind person in the dark, stumbling, etc., etc., finding interesting things, co combining them on the website, uh, all of a sudden I got an email from Don Platt, who is now a researcher for uh, The Incredible Shrinking Man, and he said, hey, we're doing this. I was like, huh? We're already doing it because we want to go to Mars. And if we go to Mars, we, we are trying to uh, downsize already animals, and actually we also want to downsize people because if we go to Mars, just imagine... If you need maybe only 30% or even 2% of the food to transport it over there, just 2% of the water, uh, way less uh, pollution, uh, how do you say it, uh, uh, pollution, yeah, let's, uh, you have to go to the toilet, etc. Just imagine if you, if you take that very long trip to Mars, you, we have to uh, be small. So actually at NASA and at the Florida uh, Institute of Space Technology, they're already investigating this. And he sent me a very thick report uh, of which I took some very interesting information about uh, signs of shrinkage that they already saw in society. I, I will talk about uh, one very interesting uh, 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 group of people living in Pakistan uh, a little later on. So um, the whole idea basically is already kind of appropriated by uh, the space agencies. Um, but there would also be considerable challenges. Uh, basically, the, the, the thing that everybody always says is, yeah, but what about the rats and the cats and the dogs? And are we going to shrink them too? Or because, you know, I, I don't want to see a rat this, this big. Uh, and, uh, of course, I also uh, don't really want that. But I also have the, the idea that, you know, we're people. We can, we can deal with it. We can find, we can find ways. <laughs> you're, you're doing <laughs> We can find ways to, to, to control that situation um, without maybe hopefully being too harmful for that situation. Other things are a bit more tricky, like uh, a hailstorm. How would you survive a hailstorm when you're only 50 centimeters? Um, I don't know that one yet. Or even the, the, the fact that if you're 50 centimeters, you probably dehydrate much quicker. So if you're in the sun, and when you're walking into the desert, 30 minutes later, you're dead. Whereas in every popular movie I've seen, people at least go for 24 hours and then they're safe, you know? We have a, a much uh, a shorter... Uh, window of opportunity, probably. Uh, that's uh, already discussed it, basically, renegotiate, uh, renegotiating space. To, but, but the adventure side of it, but also, of course, the problems. I mean, getting onto the sidewalk would be, well, you can jump higher, so, you know, there you go. One thing that is very tricky is, okay, if we get this small, and the head is this small, I mean, really, like this, what about brain capacity? And um, I was, I didn't know, I still don't know, but, but, but two things came to mind. One was singularity. At some point in the not-so-far future, um, our brain is probably going to... Hmm? Oh, shit. Well, uh, I'm, I, have, I'm, I have a lot of things to do. Um, the singularity. In the, in the future, um, 
our brains will probably connect to the internet and it will all be one happy big you know, information space. Um, absolute physical power is also smaller. It's a very nice image, you cannot really see it, but that's also a problem, of course. And then there's an interesting transition phase where we are small, but maybe other generations are not so small yet. So how do we deal with that? Of course, there's always this power thing going on between big people and small people. And how do we deal with that kind of tension in society? This is a very nice suggestion by Helene Klopper, who put very small nail polish on her nails. You cannot really see it. It's like a suggestion where we can maybe camouflage ourselves to look bigger or smaller and kind of grow visually, visually at least. Can it be done? I don't know. It's an investigation. I don't know if it can be done. But um, uh, let's see. Culture nature. At least in culture and in nature, there are some interesting things. I mean, I'm only getting to the really interesting uh, right now, but I'm just going to continue. So one interesting thing that I found is the Methuselah gene. That is, most people over 100 years old are very small. And that's because small people have an advantage. They get, they get much older. And they've uh, researched it, and they found out that there's a, gene, there's a combination of genes in these people that's different from people that don't get so old. Of course, this is interesting, because here the, the research uh, almost connects to a, a, a multi-billion dollar market where people actually, they want to get older. Um, I found an iguana who actually shrinks when the food supply uh, is smaller, and also fish. Uh, and they actually really shrink. Their bones shrink, everything shrinks, not just their muscle, everything shrinks. And they don't really know how they do it yet. Um, our brain has been shrinking since the last 5,000 years. Um, according to John Hawkes, not according to everybody, but according to John Hawkes. <laughs> and, um, and he thinks that is because maybe we become specialists and we don't need to know everything anymore. Because you know how to do that, I don't need to know it, we work together and then, you know. Because it's been going on since agricultural revolution, basically. Um, very interesting thing about island dwarfism is that species on islands sometimes get very big, like the, like the bird, or they get very small, like Homo floresiensis, it's a species living on flores. Uh, only f uh, found out about five, six years ago, they found that there's actually Homo floresiensis living there, only one meter high, um, until 18,000 years ago. So quite interesting uh, connection. Coming from this, I come to Homo sindiensis, um, which is, um, I made that one up. At some point, I want to kind of make some proposition about uh, how to put this uh, research or these investigations into proposals. Uh, Homo sindiensis is based on the, the, the people that I just said, Donald Platt, the, the, the NASA guy. He uh, put this in his report because there's a, in the Sindh Valley in Pakistan, a people living that are only 110, 120 meters. And we consider them dwarfs because, of course, they're small. And in a way, we consider them probably even to be ill because they send a whole medical team there investigating them, measuring them, etc. But the interesting thing about them is they are perfectly proportioned. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they can have children. They are healthy. They're just very small. So instead of uh, saying they are ill and what's wrong with these people, which is the science are doing that, of course, they're going. There, I actually say no. It's a new species, maybe. Maybe evolution is already taking care of itself. You know, maybe, maybe the world feels that it's getting a bit crowded. And maybe here and there some experiments are already taking place. The only thing is we cannot see it because we, have, uh, because we think they're sick. Because smallness connects to sickness. In the way, because we are so, uh, how do you say it? Um, conditioned to, or yeah, we think tall is cool. And we cannot see that small can maybe be much cooler. Um, <coughs> it's this substance that is taking care of that uh, smallness. Of course, I'm also doing more a, a, a cultural investigation, shrink films. Uh, a lot of these films are, they, they involve small people. A lot of them are kind of, you know, negative, or it's dangerous, but I, I, I think I, I like that. I have a, on, the, on the website shrink literature, like Alice in, in Wonderland, or this, uh, this is a nice image from uh, Gulliver's Travels. Uh, history, Napoleon wasn't small at all, I found out. Art. Uh, this can be seen in the pond in Tilburg at the moment, where you really get this is where you really get a sense of oh, I'm small already. Interesting notions of prejudice. If you are one inch smaller in America, that means you make a hundred, uh, eight hundred uh, dollars less, just because you're smaller, not because you're less uh, 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 well educated or because you know less, just because you're small, and that's per inch. So just imagine, if you're three inches taller, you make quite a lot of money less. Uh, one other interest that I have is the connection between entertainment and small people or dwarfs because somehow they've always managed to make a living for themselves because they were part of the entertainment business. This is a, a beautiful photo series of, uh, of matadors from Spain who are, uh, of course, they are matadors, which is kind of interesting, dangerous, fresh, but they're also uh, entertaining as dwarfs. Um, let's see if this works. 
Oh, I already know why it wasn't working. Oh, shit. Uh, let's let's skip that one. It's just a guy shrinking somebody with a shrink beam because I'm interested in this popular kind of fantasy about shrinking. It's part of our lives. We've we've read all those books when we were when we were younger. We've seen those films, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, etc. So it's already kind of part of our um, thinking, and I want to connect to that thinking. I want to make a kind of abstract uh, an abstraction of our desire to maybe shrink or to fantasize about shrinking, which is mostly. Um, uh, manifested in uh, microphilia, which is the fantasy about very small women or men. And uh, the other way around is like fantasizing about giantesses, you know, and uh, them crushing you, etc., which is a kind of very strange uh, sexual fantasy subculture. But for me, that doesn't matter. I want to kind of connect to the fantasy part and, 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 and look at it in a like abstract way. Yeah. And then I would like to try to, but this is, I mean, I would like to just, this is two minutes. If it works. It's the final scene from The Incredible Shrinking Man, the movie of which, of course, I take the, the title for this blog. Um, but I don't know how to make it work. The other one worked all of a sudden. I, I like to show it because somehow he makes a connection between biology, culture, religion. He sees himself shrinking into oblivion, but all of a sudden the oblivion doesn't become oblivion, but it becomes being part of a bigger whole. And um, I, I, I just think it's a beautiful kind of ending to this sped up lecture all of a sudden. <laughs> had presumed upon nature that existence begins and ends is man's conception, not nature's. And I felt my body dwindling, melting, becoming nothing. My fears melted away, and in their place came acceptance. All this vast majesty of creation, it had to mean something. And then I meant something too. Yes, smaller than the smallest, I meant something too. To God, there is no zero. I still exist. There's so much more. There's so much more, yeah. Please come to the workshop.